There's a simple law you can apply to your goal setting that will definitely improve the amount of things you're able to get done. It's called Grandma's Law. Today we'll talk about how you can put Grandma's Law to work for you and your team. We've all been there. Growing up, my folks called them trial foods. Food we hadn't tried before, but they thought we should eat as part of a healthy, balanced diet. Stuff like spinach, broccoli, cooked carrots, Brussels sprouts. I had no interest in these foods. I'd avoid them wherever possible. But then my parents would pull a dirty trick on me. They invoked what Dr. Ogden Lindsay calls Grandma's Law. They took something they knew I liked, such as eating dessert, and used it as incentive for me to do something I didn't, like eating vegetables. If you eat your spinach, you can have some pie later. You can use Grandma's Law to your advantage. And this can apply to you on a personal level or to your whole team as well. As an individual, one way to do this is to make a list of all the things you need to get done, put it in the order of the most enjoyable things first, and the least enjoyable ones last. Now, once you have your list, start checking things off. But here's the trick. Start from the bottom of the list. As you do each task, the next one's going to be much more enjoyable, something to look forward to. This is a great way to get those ugly tasks out of the way early so they aren't hanging over your head. Each time you get a task done, the next one can serve as a sort of reward for having gotten the previous one done. I used this when I was doing a lot of triathlons. I love to bike, I love to run, but swimming is definitely not my strong suit. It's a hassle to get to the pool, the water's cold, and the little girl in the next lane is so fast she makes me look like I'm going backwards. So not my favorite. Swimming was my Brussels sprouts of my whole workout program. Yet the only way to get better was to practice regularly. So I used Grandma's Law on myself. It was at the bottom of my list of things I like to do, so it was the first thing I did every day. Once I was done with it, everything else seemed easier. I don't claim to be a fast swimmer, but the rule definitely helped me get better. Now you can use this in a team setting as well. In his book, Bringing Out the Best in People, author and clinical psychologist Aubrey Daniels gives the example of a production team at a Kodak factory. A department manager named Gary Lorgan knew that his employees enjoyed working on special work-related projects as teams, and he also knew they had production quotas and quality standards that they had to meet, and they were important, but not nearly as fun for his people. So Lorgan made a deal with his team. It set a weekly production goal for the department, and that's what they'd work on first. But as soon as they met their quota, they would shut down the line, and the employees got to work on their special projects for the rest of the week. This arrangement served as a great spur to the department. They'd work hard to get the job done. They even put large graphic charts so they could track their progress and see how they were doing and stay focused. And the quotas were tough to meet. Sometimes they didn't get there at all. But at other times, they got to their goal on Thursday afternoon, and they had all of Friday to do fun stuff. So whatever you and your team do, Think about what the fun things are. Ask your teammates. And then see about arranging the work so that the important stuff gets done first, and then the fun stuff comes as a reward. At the heart of this approach to getting things done is the idea of immediate positive reinforcement. If you arrange the work so that good things come as a result of doing the important but not so fun stuff, it's much more likely those important things will get done. The key here is that the payoff has to be certain and immediate. Not something they might get at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, but something that pays off right away. Promising me a piece of apple pie next month if I eat Brussels sprouts today, not a strong incentive. But if you set that pie up on the counter where I can see it, or I can smell it, and if I know all I gotta do is choke down a few vegetables, you can bet I'll start eating healthy. The sooner the payoff, the stronger the incentive. So figure out what your apple pie is, what your Brussels sprouts are, and get organized so that you can eat healthy, get dessert, and make grandma proud. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Maybe share it with a friend who might be having trouble choking down the vegetables on his plate. And if you're looking for more helpful tips about leadership, be sure to head on over to the Rapid Start Leadership website, where we do our best to make the leadership learning curve a little less steep. Thanks, and take care.